Oh man, um, I'm, I just clicked live, so it looks okay. like we're live here. On Instagram, is it live on Instagram? Um, Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. So oh, okay, I, cool, cool. I would have to, um, I would have to upgrade my, um, my thing, mm -hmm. in order to um, have like the fourth platform. So oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I hey, take a picture for my, for my Okay. Okay, cool. <laughs> there we go. So excited. And I'm 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 such a I don't even know the word, but I love when people start new things or when they literally just jump out there to dive into what they're doing. So I'm so happy for you. When I seen that you started, I was like, and she did it. She did. <laughs> did it. Thank you so much for being that catalyst. Cause mm -hmm. if it wasn't for you, I would have never hopped on the, the podcast. I would have because I, you know, like I told you originally. And before we deep dive into that, girl, let's let's talk about who you are, what you do, what you don't do. <laughs> I, I I think you're like a theory multipreneur. Yes, but that's a, ladies that's and gentlemen. Good. <laughs> Welcome and to always, Fran and Fran. Woo woo. I was about to say it's always so <laughs> weird when I get interviewed because I'm always doing the the interviewing. So when I get interviewed, I'd be like, "Oh, this is new." <laughs> <laughs> I think it's good because um in Toastmasters, are, are you familiar with Toastmasters? No, I'm not. So Toastmasters is a public speaking organization a club, and it's a support group to help you build upon your public speaking skills. Okay. And so they have, they have something, a part of the program called uh, Table Topics, and you got to mm -hmm. think on your feet. And I feel like interviews are just like that. You, like, For oh, sure. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, if you are just now joining us, I have the author of The Bastard Child. Her name is Kawaya Haynes. And goodness, yes, please put that a little bit closer to the screen. Look at that. Ah, her story. <laughs> is... <laughs> her story is so compelling. And the things that she's experienced in her life, and I believe Kawaya is like a young age of uh, 30. <laughs> right, yep. 30, 30 something, 30 something. Yeah, you know, you know what they say about black and black and uh brown folks. Uh, we know it don't, brown crack. don't frown and black don't crack. Nope, <laughs> so she looks like she in her 20s. <laughs> her, uh, and Kawhi is not just an author, but she's also a serial entrepreneur, and she has such a resilient story that, uh, for those of you that might have dealt with either depression or um, domestic violence, she is going to dabble into some of those conversations. So if you have any questions, please feel free to pop that in the chat. But before we get into that, Kawhi, if you can just share a little bit about what you do. Um, sure. I only put a little bit of bio and then yeah. please have the floor. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Kawaya Haynes. I do go by K or KK because people often um, have a hard time pronouncing my name. So I just try to make it easy. And like she said, I am a new author. I just publicly <laughs> up your name. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Everybody, everybody. It's Kawaya, it's like, hey. Kawaya. K or K way, honestly, people when they meet me, they kind of get their own little nickname for me. So the only people that my mama don't even call me Kawaya, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> she called me a whole That's bunch of different names. Um, but like she mentioned, I am a new author. I am a entrepreneur. I am a business owner. But I'll just broaden that and say entrepreneur because I do wear, wear several different hats. But my main focuses are my wellness business that I own, um, my social media, or not social media, my YouTube platform where I'm able to let you guys get to know me on a more intimate level. Um, and then being an author, a new author. I always I tell people, I joke about it. No, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, 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 go, no, please finish. I was about I, I was to say, I, um, published. I published my book last year in August. 
So I'm okay. still new. I'm still new, but I joke a lot and um, I'm a Gemini baby. So when I when I start listening, everything that I <laughs> that I do, I tell people, please don't be alarmed. I'm a Gemini. So I have to do a lot of things <laughs> in order to keep me um, stimulated. So because people yeah. are like, my goodness, and I work a full time job. I ain't even going to keep that out of there because on my TikTok, I try I'm trying to start a new segment where I kind of shed light on being an entrepreneur because I feel like in the generation that we live in now when people hear entrepreneur they think that a person's not working a nine to five job they live in a penthouse they have all this money to get all this aesthetically pleasing content and I'm trying to help people understand that being an entrepreneur does not mean that you do not work because if you right. don't work, you are not going to be able to fund your businesses. You're not going to be able to travel to network, go to events. Mm -hmm. So all the young aspiring entrepreneurs, I'm trying to get them to be able to accept, like, it's okay to work. Like one thing about it, if you ask anybody that knows me, I'm gonna keep a job, <laughs> like not because I have to, but I look at working a nine to five job as a source of income. It's literally that that's what it is to me. It's not that's oh, what it I is. have to work, but it's a stream, a steady stream of income. So best mm -hmm. believe I'm clocking in every day. That's why my days be so long, but I'll keep one to two jobs. This job is going to be for this business, that business. The other mm -hmm. job is going to be for this business and that business. And until I get to the point where faithfully I'm making whatever my goal is, I'm going to keep a job. And then even after that, I literally just filmed a video earlier. I said, I don't care if I have $100,000 in my bank account. I'm going to be clocking it somewhere to keep my yeah. money stable, literally. Like you but, mentioned yeah. earlier about being a Gemini and mm -hmm. having to keep me stimulated. I think mm -hmm. sometimes when we do what feels right for us, the right direction mm -hmm. for us, mm -hmm. uh, I think sometimes we try to tell other people the why of what, what we're doing. And I really have found myself saying, I really don't have to explain to you why I'm doing what I'm doing, because this nope. is what feels good to me. And, mm -hmm. the and same that's a good point. With apologizing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's I, a, I, that's a very, I think it's because of which people say all the time, the fast paced life that we live, like, Instagram, I feel like we feel like if you're not on there, then you have to give an explanation or if you are working or your path is different, you have to tell people why. But in reality, like learn what works for you in your life and do not compare yourself to anybody. Like at my big age of 30, <laughs> that is one lesson that I feel like I have embodied and accepted and I feel yes. like that's why I'm doing so well now um, because I'm literally in my own lane. I'm not looking to the left and I'm not looking to the right. I might look in front of me or look at things that I've done in the past to kind of stay yeah. straight, but I'm not comparing myself. Me and you had um, talked about, there's so many people that have podcasts. There's so many people that are authors. There's so many people that are everything, but mm -hmm. I'm still in my lane and in my little bubble. <laughs> That I'm yeah. not going to be like, oh, well, this girl, she's doing a podcast and she has X amount of views and blah, blah, blah. That's good for her and her podcast. But my lane is my lane. So I feel like if more people just accept that, people might do a little bit better. Yeah, God, if it wasn't <laughs> for you, girl. And I'm so grateful that you pushed me to do that. Because like like you said, I like, man, there's a whole bunch of podcasts out here. But you're right. Mm -hmm. Nobody can move in my energy. At I can't all. move your energy. I can't live the life that you live. You can't mm -hmm. live the life the life that I live to um, have those comparisons because this is where we are. Um, mm -hmm. This is life in its experience. Mm -hmm. And this is the beautiful thing about that. We can have dialogue about the different contrasts that we felt and experienced. Yeah. And, so, and it's similar experiences, but like you, like you just said, it's, it's a different experience. What you went through and I went through was very similar, but mm -hmm. we can, we can collaborate and look where, we're, look where we're at now. I know. Because you inspire me because I'm not a mom yet. So that has always like, and I don't talk about it a lot, but that is something that I'm afraid of. And now that I'm 30 years old, I'm like, at some point God's 
willing. I have a child, but I also come from trauma. So I don't know what that looks like in a healthy way to have mm. come from trauma and then become a mother. So you are a perfect example that you can mm. come from trauma and look at how you turned out and then how you nurture and mother your kids. Like I'm, I'm, I'm okay now. I was a little scared, <laughs> but I'm like, I'm, I have a little hope. That's what I was looking for. I have a little bit of hope. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you for those accolades. Um, but you know, as well as I do, you know, the journey that comes from all that trauma. But yeah, I'm, I am grateful uh, mm -hmm. that my story has led me to be an example to you too. And I know that yeah. yours is going to impact all these people that are watching, you know, on social media land. Mm -hmm. So going, I wanted to ask you a few fun questions before we dive deep. <laughs> yeah, we like a fun oh. question. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So let me have this. Let me get this question real quick. So. And your name is so cute. The name of your podcast is so cute. Thank you. I just uh -huh. thought that would be like so perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's super cute. And it's it makes people, your guests that you have on your show feel like your friend. Like, okay, cool, we friends. Yay. <laughs> Girl, we are friends because um, this idea here is like we are all going in a direction of some sort. And I feel mm -hmm. like it is to be like a collaborative healing community through the I stories know, that right. we have. Mm -hmm. So it's, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's all right. right. So drum roll. <laughs> boom. Mm -hmm. If you were an animal, mm -hmm. <laughs> which one would you be? Oh, that's that's such a fun question. So my top two that come to mind, because these are my two favorite animals, turtles. Um, because I just love I have literally two baby turtles. I might take the camera over there, but turtles are my top, top favorite animal because everything that a turtle embodies, I feel like I am. They're so like they don't they obviously don't make noise or nothing, but they mm -hmm. also can be very energetic. They represent peace and stability, which is what I crave for my life. So I would say if I could be a turtle, mm. I would be a turtle and um, uh, yes. a monkey. I'm not even going to lie to you. A monkey. Monkeys are so <laughs> fascinating to me <laughs> okay, because they okay. have a, they're su super smart, I feel like, and I feel like they catch on to things very quickly um mm. and i don't know i just i just like i just like them so i would say turtles and my and a monkey <laughs> so I that's my gemini side i can't i can't pick just <laughs> one it's, it's both, it gotta be two <laughs> uh yeah so uh what do you call that disclaimer there's no rules to this game <laughs> okay perfect so a third one i really like koalas <laughs> like, <let's go> <laughs> i really like koalas as well they are so cute i love them and it does i think it's the idea of like how you know when you go to the zoo it's like i just wanted they're so furry and fluffy mm -hmm. i just want to Oh my God. Mm -hmm. The turtle girl. I have a big, huge ass picture in my room. Mm -hmm. That turtle. Yeah. Like, turtle is, that's my spare animal. Oh girl. Yes. You're speaking <laughs> my language. <laughs> All right. Let me see one more question here mm -hmm. or, or two more, two more. Um, tell me something I don't know about you. Hmm. Mm -mm. Something you don't know about me. If I could change my career path, I would travel the world and eat at every restaurant, like all the famous restaurants in whichever country or city that I went to. Like if I re if somebody paid me X amount of dollars and said, look, you could, if you could change your, we're going to give you this amount of money to change your career and you don't have to worry about nothing else. I would literally travel the world and document myself eating at different restaurants and stuff. Girl, you are I, speaking I love language. That. <laughs> I'm That's something that people don't, because I do so much, people, I don't think that, I know that people know that I love food, but not to the extent like sis would, like, I would, 
I would I would give everything away and be able to if I could just travel the world and eat, I would be a happy girl. Girl, because food that's just my makes me happy. Food. food and laughter and good conversation. Yeah. Mm. Okay. See, we 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 the same spirit tribe. <laughs> 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 All right. This last question is: What is your favorite board game? My favorite wow. board game, and that's also another fun fact. I don't like board games. I'm not even gonna lie to you. My brain really? is such a yes, a fast paced, like always working type of brain. So playing mm-hmm. games low key stresses me out. <laughs> so I don't play games really to decompress no. like people be like oh let's play a board game i rather either sit and talk or take a nap or watch a movie but if i have to pick a board game i would say you don't have to pick it if you don't like it that's great um okay what is it, what what kind of games do you like and give me just a second because i need to blow my nose because it's over here running like it's crazy okay oh, just a moment <laughs> okay I'm sure they probably didn't do this on any podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All right. So the board games mm-hmm. you're saying. So my favorite type of game would be mm-hmm. card games. I'm not even gonna lie to you, which is why I'm so attracted to putting out my own. But like, there's one oh, called. Oh, oh. Um, Tell people about that because. Or yeah, so I was on Kawhi's, um Kawhi's, um her her podcast called K's mm-hmm. Way, and she had this game on there, and it was mm-hmm. asking me questions, and I told yeah. her, "Girl, I'm still trying to figure out my stuff." So she <laughs> now is offering my um, icebreaker game that I am in the works of creating is called Chitter Chatter, um, which leads me to say that those are the types of games that I like to play. There's one called like Dive Deep. There's drinking card games that you can play but those type of games i like more than um board games but my chitter chatter game i've watched so many podcasts and i see that people buy these different icebreaker games and stuff because i mean it it for those of you that don't have a podcast it's very hard to be yourself generate good questions conduct a good interview so sometimes having those cue cards already created for you makes the game 10 times easier because when I first started my podcast, I didn't want to use somebody else's generated questions. I wanted everything on my, on my um, podcast to be super authentic and literally everything from my dome. So I literally months before even putting out my first episode created about 20 questions and then 15 chitter chatter games. And I plan to each season, um add new cards on there maybe every two seasons but yeah so those are the type of games that i like <laughs> i really love that because i was we were t- i was telling Kawhi before we started the um the the live stream mm-hmm. that i was getting lost uh in a podcast that i had earlier because um the guests that i had went with the full conversation i'm like hold up girl hold up (laughs) and sometimes (laughs) people do sometimes people do that but if they see that you already kind of have your questions and you're Mm -hmm. gonna kind of guide the conversation then it'll be a little easier because you don't want the episodes to be too too long and for me specifically um i know that there are certain topics that i want to touch on with each guest so -hmm. that's why i kind of have those cards there i'll let people talk freely but i know depression, anxiety, um, how to live and cope in this social media world that we live in. I like mm-hmm. getting those three questions answered um, by every guest that I have to get and and share different perspectives on the same topic. So I'll so let people kind of talk. Mm-hmm. Depression, mm-hmm. Anxiety, anxiety, and then how to cope in the social media world that we live in. Because I feel like um, that's a very... I guess it's relevant. Yeah, it's very, very re- uh, relevant. Yeah, I felt like those questions that you asked too um, mm-hmm. are questions that I also asked, but they were mm-hmm. for myself. Yeah, because I really love learning how other people cope. 
Me um, too. That's not how how I learn life. You see right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, I would agree. Yeah. And maybe that's why I'm so intrigued um, with wanting to share so many perspectives because I felt like, and I don't know if it's everybody, but when I was going through my divorce with my ex and that was a very abusive relationship, mm -hmm. I didn't have any friends at the time that went through anything of that nature. So I really was like by myself going through it. I didn't really talk to my biological mom about it. I didn't really talk to my adoptive parent about it because I was kind of more embarrassed about it. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel like now I want to touch on those topics for people that do that were like myself and didn't have those tools or anybody to talk to going through it. At least like if we touch on it on our platforms, yeah. so many kids are on YouTube, they might just come across our video. Kids, teens, young adults, like we're on YouTube and social media. Yeah. So if we uh, touch on these topics, they might not have friends that are going through it, but they can at least find something because I didn't resource, find right? Yeah. I didn't I wouldn't say that I found a lot of videos on how to help me with depression, but I started watching podcasts like Jim Rohn and um Les Brown, like some of those people, but yes those are not like, what's the word that I'm looking for? They're, they're not catered to like talking about trauma. They're really yes. more about like goal setting and. Um, and there's su it's such a far reach for them. I mm -hmm. feel like and it's not just like, oh, this girl, like if they watch our things, it's like we're in the now. So right. that's more there years ago. So I feel like yeah. that's another, that's another good reason. That's a great thing that you brought up um, because mm -hmm. also too, like when, during your divorce season and you say you didn't have anybody to reach out to. Mm -hmm. um, I think growing up, uh, not having coping, uh, coping skills or mm -hmm. just learning how to, uh, what's the right word for it? Conflict resolution skills. Yes. Asking, asking mm -hmm. was a very big thing that I didn't know how to do. Yeah. What I'm still working with that. that. That's something mm -hmm. for you too. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that comes from, I don't know if it stems from fa fear of being judged, um, mm -hmm. because sometimes if you ask certain questions to people, they might be like, oh, why don't you know that? Or, oh, now they're in your business. So I know for me, reaching out for help with certain things, mm -hmm. I was like, mm, I don't know. I'm a little bit more confident now because I'm just like, hey, I'm, I've accepted, like, I'm at where I'm at. Right. Um and there's, that's nothing to be embarrassed about. That's nothing to feel judged about. And if somebody does judge you or make you feel that way, that's honestly like, that's not an emotionally that's their, intelligent that's their person. Thing, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I don't know if we can cuss on here, but. Bleep. <laughs> 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 Well, we have more in common than I think. Uh -huh. I love cues and stuff. <laughs> when was, when's your birthday? April 4th. In Aries. I love Gemini's. Yeah, I love um, Aries as well. <laughs> you see, we, me we mesh very well because you guys give us balance in Gemini's. We do not naturally have our own balance or we struggle with that. We can find balance, but it literally goes up and down, up and down, up and down versus I feel like Aries, well, the Aries that I've come in contact with, for the most part, mm -hmm. you guys are very sound mind and it's not up and down emotions and you guys are very rational which gemini's are very irrational at times <laughs> so that's why we mesh very well Girl, i'm like thinking about those descriptors uh some of those i could take some of them uh, <laughs> i'm still i'm still learning what that looks like but for the most part stability is definitely something important yeah but, um what do you call that I think for you guys, for us, we love the idea that you guys are all over the place because that <laughs> that that fuels our creativity to want to like, mm -hmm. oh yes, let's see where this can go so we can make magic together. That's what I feel. Yeah, I agree. And I'm still yeah. just sitting here like. <laughs> I know. I was just gonna say. I was just gonna ask you about the book now because I'm sorry because we we just going, we just I'm just flowing, girl. <laughs> So, ladies and gentlemen, quiet, please let us know about your book. How in the world did you start to begin to think to write that? 
and what was the premise behind it and um how do you feel that your story um is able to assist others uh in their journey if they are in that space i know okay. i actually love <laughs> yeah i was about to say that's the, um so if i miss anything please let me know but ladies and gentlemen my the title of my book is bastard child um what stemmed me to write the book um honestly i I would say yearly, I write down kind of like what goals I want to accomplish for the year. And with my wellness business, I do um, do gerontology work, which if you guys don't know, that is catering to seniors. So I was working at the time I was working with one of my um, clients and my like I shared previous in this interview, my brain is literally constantly working. So as I'm working with my client doing meal prep and stuff, I'm thinking like, okay, I just dropped my first clothing line. I'm like, how can I elevate my brand? What else can I add to my brand as far as products, services? And the title Bastard Child came to mind. And immediately I grabbed my phone, wrote out the word Bastard Child and wrote out my um, about me or like the introduction to the book. Yeah. And then... Um, I started looking, I was like, okay, so I want to write a book. So that is a product now that I want to add to my brand as a whole. Writing a book has been something or had been something that kind of was a faint idea at a moment mm -hmm. in my life, but I didn't ever really put any thought into how to actually bring that to life until that day when I had a whole full title and it literally started flowing to me. Wow. So I started reaching out to friends like, hey, I want to write a book. Do you know any authors that like help put the book together, bring it to life? Because I felt like mm -hmm. I needed a publishing team um, because how I talk, I'm like, that can't be formulated in a book because if people read that, <laughs> they're going to be this and now and that and what and all types of words that I can't <laughs> say that would be very mm -hmm. offensive to the average reader. So I'm like, okay, so I know I can't sit there and type out the whole or narrate the whole story. Um, so I need a publishing team. So I was reaching out to everybody. I'm asking my clients, I'm asking friends of friends. And then I remembered that I had a friend that I had met through another mutual friend. And I told her, I'm like, hey, so I have this idea. I want to write a book. I really don't know how to do that. And me and her had prior, maybe, I would say maybe a month prior to uh, prior to me even like coming up with the name, I was kind of telling her my story. And she's mm -hmm. like, you need to make that into a book. And I'm like, yeah, kind of, kind of vaguely. I'm like, yeah. And she was like, well, I have a independent um, publishing company that I recently started. And she's like, I okay. published one book, but I've never published another person's story. And I was like, we're done. <laughs> I was like, right? I was like, we are done. So let's start working. Um, and I was her first book and she is on the back of my book. Her company is called Queen X Literature. Can you, uh, so we there? started, this is her, oh, that, this is her right there. I was like, I think that's you. <laughs> <laughs> this one. Queen so X Literature. Use um, Queen, Queen X Literature. Okay. Yeah, on Instagram. Um, but we set up Zoom meetings. From that meeting, we set up an audio. Um, there's an app called Otter. And Bro, she yes, put it. that on. And she <laughs> let me just get to talking. So that helped write, write the book. So I'm like, OK, cool. I didn't know how to put the words in an actual book and do all of that. So her publishing company literally helped me with that. I just had to tell my story. Um, and then I told her that my goal for the book, I really wanted to narrate like an actual story. I did not want people to just read the book and just be like, oh, well, I'm so sad and sorry. Like I wanted people to feel like they were me. They were there. They mm. like, I wanted a book to feel like a movie. Um, mm. And when I Girl. first started telling her my story, um, she's like, that's two books into one. So I'm like, okay, so my first book, I didn't want to put too much on people. So I wanted my first book to be 
a success type of book. I wanted people to read the book and then be inspired. Like, you know what, regardless of what I've gone through, what I come from, I still, at the end of the day, can pursue and reach every goal that I set out to aspire. So that is what the faster yes. child's goal and main focus is. And I was super vulnerable with some of the things that I've gone through in my life and the way that I narrated it. I know people or the feedback that I've gotten, they're like, oh my gosh, but I really like, it's really what I've gone through in my life. But I want, I painted such an ugly picture in the beginning because at the mm -hmm. end of the book, then I branch over and show kind of how I ended up to where oh, I'm at now. You're so I started off ugly. Come on, girl, give us something. Give us something. Give us something. <laughs> it started off very ugly. I talked about um, being adopted, which I've been in the social media presence since I would say 2015, but I've done a lot of like brand work, modeling, um just kind of showy i in my opinion i would say showy type of things and people never really knew like why i work so hard mm. um and stay s so consistent in anything that i do so letting people know that i come from foster care i was then adopted what mentally i went through being adopted because i feel like when people hear the word adopted they think oh everything's great the kid is saved and they're set up for life. And that was not my truth or my um, perspective on being adopted. So I shared that in my story. I shared um, going through an abusive relationship mm. that people would not know unless like you talk to me on a more intimate level, but putting it in the book was me letting my guard down and I guess accepting that there are so many people that go through an abusive relationship, but they're stuck in that place. I've gone through a very abusive relationship, but I still had dreams to be and do exactly what I'm doing today. So I did, I don't want anybody that has gone through traumatic things in their life to feel like, okay, that's, this is the end all be all. And I'm sad or I'll be depressed for the rest of my life um, because that honestly was just fuel for me to keep going. And when I do have moments that I feel like giving up, which are more regular than not, I think about if I got through that, oh, what I'm going through right now is not nearly as bad as emotionally being abused or physically being abused. So I'm okay. Girl. So being able to touch on those things it gave me strength, but at mm -hmm. the same time, it, I knew that it would give other people strength. And mm -hmm. it honestly was so therapeutic for me because prior to writing the book, anytime I talked about going through an abusive relationship or coming out of foster care or not having a good relationship with my mom, I would get so teary eyed. But as you see now, I'm so confident <laughs> or I'm okay talking about it. So now I know that I'm, I'm, I'm fully healed. And I didn't mm -hmm. know until writing my book, like, oh, I'm not as healed as I thought I was. So this was closure for me and mm. entering into my new chapter of life of where I'm at now. So being able to touch on, and then the title alone, Bastard Child, that is, I took everything that happened to me in my life that could be used as a negative and I turned it into a positive. Because when mm -hmm. people hear Bastard Child, what does that mean? Oh, she don't know right. her daddy. <laughs> she don't got a daddy, which is very, <laughs> very true. But look at where I'm at today. So right. any girl or person out there that suffers from not having a dad, because that used to bother me. And I used to, I am a daddy's girl. And I will always be like, dang, like I know what my mom is and how she is. I wonder if these parts of me are like my dad. So I took mm. that and I'm like, okay, well, it, nobody has anything to use against me, so to say, because I'm I'm telling you myself, <laughs> and I want people Girl. to be that confident in their truth. That is like, yes, that did happen. Yes, I've gone through an abusive relationship. Yes, I come out of foster care. But what does that have to do with where I'm at today and what I want to do really? with my future? Like, don't let that hold you back from where it is that you're trying to go. So that was the gist or the main meat and potatoes that I wanted people to get out of my book. Goodness, I like as you were sharing those ideas of um, 
what do you call that? Like when you were talking about being a daddy's girl and mm-hmm. I used to ask those same questions too. Like, dang, yeah. is this behavior that my dad did? And I have some of my yeah. cousins here that are watching this. Like mm-hmm. they grew up with my father and I didn't know, but my mom, See, like, she, yeah. And like, I have no, no, um, I don't know what the man looks like. I don't mm. know what, I don't know anything. So from, I would say the ages of 14 to about 19, 20 ish, mm-hmm. it was on me heavy. Like, dang, like there's a whole other side to mm-hmm. me that I, I don't know. And I used to just feel like it was a missing piece. Mm-hmm. And then people did tease about and used to be like, oh, that's a bastard or you like that is the definition of it. So I'm just like, you know what? Like, it is what it is. I can't change it. So yeah. bastard child, what? Oh, okay. <laughs> Right. And it look at look <laughs> where you are. Like it didn't define you. No. And I feel we inherently know what mm-hmm. the behaviors are that we have that yeah. don't belong to, to us because we see that our, our moms sure. act one way and we're like, dang, this definitely have to be like a daddy <laughs> 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 characteristic. <For> sure. <laughs> but see, and it's weird that you say that because being able to see my mom. I feel like my mom, my biological mother, she's a very independent go-getter, always mm. working. So I feel like I inherited that side of her. Okay. But this entrepreneur side that I have, and I will say how witty I am, I honestly, I would say I feel like I must have gotten that from my dad. I'm like, whoever he is, he must have been a smart man because my mom, she's not really like a creative. She's mm-hmm. very like, nine to five, like I'm working, she's very good with saving. So I do get that portion from her, but Mm -hmm. this other side of me, and I I would have thought that it would be like negative stuff that I'll be like, oh, I must've got that from my daddy. But it's honestly, it's some good stuff in there. I'm like, oh, well, he he, I mean, he might might not have been as bad as I think he is. Right, right. Like I didn't or know my dad proud, was an entrepreneur. He is. <laughs> right, right. He would be. This is um, so thank him for his seed. Mm-hmm. Um, but you did all this work <laughs> to get to where we are right now, right? You mm-hmm. you did you did the book selling. You did the research to find out how to do this. You did. Um, uh, and resource you know, is a school. word that I really want all the viewers to take. There mm-hmm. are resources for everything like we've touched on. I mean, if you need help with financial structure, there's a resource. If you need help, whatever you can think about, there is a resource for that. And that is something that I did not take lightly when it came mm-hmm. from, I'm like, oh, I'm adopted. Again, that's a negative thing. There are resources for kids or people that have come out of the adoption system. So if you want to start a business, there's a resource for that. If you want to buy a home, if you want to get, if you want to learn how to cook from the smallest thing to the biggest thing, utilize your resources because they mm. are out there. And I'm the type of person that if I sit there and I see, like we've talked about before, there are several people that do the same thing. If I see a person that is somewhere where I want to get, being a motivational speaker, Whatever it is, I'm like, okay, cool. So how did that person get there? There's a resource to that. So I'm telling people like, hey, I'm an aspiring um, entrepreneur. I want to learn how to do better with my finances. I want to get in school. I want to buy a house. Who can point me in that direction to get me to where I'm trying to get? You don't have to do it by yourself. And again, there are people that kind of have paved the way for you. Not that you have to copy them. But there are people that have paved the way to where you're trying to get. So utilize your resources. You can never have too many resources. Never, right. never, so, never, never, never. Um, on your page, do you have resources that you can provide for um, people that have been in the foster care system? Um, so that way, or if they can just reach out to you via social media, would that be something that you could? Yeah, we might be that? starting something new because I did not <laughs> even think about that aspect of having that resource there my wellness business is called fusion care so you guys okay. can follow that on instagram oh, well, that tell people what that is and then and fusion we'll care into- my and i've rebranded my wellness business because i started off being a personal trainer um post my abusive relationship because i'm like mm-hmm. okay so i don't want to start doing say, drugs a personal trainer like fitness trainer 
yes, I started off okay. being, um, I got my certification in personal training, holistic nutrition, and I'm okay. like, okay, so I don't want to do drugs because I'm very depressed because I, at the time, was 22, 23, now divorced in a whole new city by myself. So mm. I'm like, what am I going to do? So I was trying to find positive things for myself to do to keep my brain occupied so that I wouldn't right. be depressed. So I started going to the gym. And mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, so this is good. It was giving me good endorphins. It was giving me something to do so that I wouldn't be by myself. So I'm like, I, that's how I started my fitness business. So in the beginning, I called it Case Fit Way. So I was targeting women that had gone through traumatic backgrounds and I was giving them that positive thing to do to not focus on the depression of what they were going through and those types of things. And then that's, after- That's a beautiful concept. It's called Case mm -hmm. Fit Way. Originally, my brand was called Case Fit Ways. Okay. When I first then, first started, it was and, Case and then, Fit, Fit Ways, and it transitioned to Fusion Care. And Fusion, I, the, I chose the name Fusion because it was taking where I was and where I wanted to be and combining the two. And that when you fuse something together, <laughs> that's, what, that's what you get. So I took I where that. I was, where I wanted to be, and I combined it. So now I, instead of just focusing on the physical attributes of health and wellness, yes. I'm focusing yes. on identifying traumas, how to deal with traumas through Girl. discipline, through mind, mindful wellness. So not physical cranking out 25 reps of something, but right, right. that might not work for one person. So we'll have mm. to, I'll set up a consultation and i'll dissect okay what are your goals what are you presently going through in your life right now that will be a roadblock for you girl to reach i've never your goals. heard of this kind of like yeah y'all heard it history. first okay <laughs> we heard it here on friend and friends <laughs> y'all heard I it first because oh my people god know that i've transitioned into that but i have not had a opportunity to fully explain why and how and um the difference things that i'm offering now um i'll be and my website will be done by the end of march so you guys have that to look forward to but i'll be hosting literally every other sunday of the month different classes focusing on breaking down nutrition breaking down how to cope with different things that you're going through in life because i get asked all the time how are you so disciplined and you have so much stuff going through so i'm literally just going to host the class and talk about that <laughs> And I reached Girl, out to um, several different people and I said, okay, what classes do you guys want to see from me? And people were saying how to structure, how to have discipline, how to cope with like when you're going through relationship type of things. Like, so I'll be offering classes like that. Um, I, and I people don't understand. <clears throat> I'm sorry. What I wanted to, I wanted to rewrap my head around this concept of fitness emotional wealth yes. and then how it ties into our eating and like yes i love how you said where you are right now because yes. there's this book um mm -hmm. it's called um the secret language of the body and mm -hmm. it identifies various parts of our body mm -hmm. that deal with either maybe family issues mm -hmm. uh dealing maybe with like self-worth and mm -hmm. different parts our body hold on to those traumas and for you to bring that yes. up and identify that and use yes. that into like you said in a healthy way to learn how to mm -hmm. release that stuff along mm -hmm. with our eating girl mm -hmm. this is what a beautiful and whole picture to give people this kind of tool to oh god it's so freeing thank you you're welcome and i over the years, I understood with like the things that I was going through in my own life, when it comes to achieving goals, what you're going through in your present life can affect your goal achieving in a positive or a negative way. Mm -hmm. So you have to adjust to what you're going through in your life. If there's a girl that's saying, oh, my goal is to work out six times a week because I'm trying to lose 50 pounds. If she's in a stressful environment, it is going to be hard for her to commit to those six days to lose those 50 pounds. So my goal is to dissect like, okay, how are you mentally? 
what are some of the barriers that you have in your present life that will affect you from making it to the gym now okay we've identified those barriers now what are some things that we can counteract so if it's um i don't have enough time okay my job is okay well here's a quicker workout so that you're still moving you're still getting a little something in but you may not be able to commit to six days so i try to i will just try to make the person feel better like okay we're still going to achieve that goal or get to your goal it might take a little bit of longer but here are some different tools that you can use when Girl, those roadblocks come up because roadblocks are going to come up. With you. <laughs> so, uh, I haven't talked about it because I was waiting for the website to be fully done and I'm also dropping my first ebook this okay. year as well okay. and to tie it into the fitness as well because I've I've Girl. sold and hosted 30 day challenges those different mm-hmm. types of things but my ebook will be something that people can buy that will have some of my fa- favorite recipes, my disciplines that I use, which are journaling, identifying your why, but I'll mm. have like a journal section so that people can write down their why to go back and reflect on it later, a little calendar, budgeting, girl. like all that good stuff. So oh, girl. y'all heard oh, it the- first. <laughs> I know, y'all heard it first on here. Oh my God, I'm so excited for it because it's... Uh, it just touches me in such a way um, that we don't realize that um, our eating is definitely can be a response to our trauma. Like it for can. me, we come from food. And that's why I'm like, wait, yes. did she say what? I, she's speaking my language. Like this is. And that's not a bad okay, thing. Comfort food, not here. comfort food and having your comfort thing is not a bad thing. I just literally show people how to make it work for you. And I'm Mm -hmm. very realistic. And I like to teach people how to be real with themselves. And that's how you're going to achieve whatever you're going to achieve. You might need a cupcake. You might need a brownie. Because my comfort food, when I'm really, really sad. (laughs) Say it again, girl. Say it again. You might need a cupcake. You might need a brownie. We might need a cupcake. We might need a brownie. When I'm super sad, if and y'all now you guys know this about me if i'm eating an ice cream cone i'm i'm really sad that is my comfort thing i feel like that's the like but we all need those things so that doesn't make it you a bad person that doesn't mean that you're not going to reach the goal that you're trying to get but being real and then knowing when to pull yourself out of that that's what i'm trying to teach Mm. because depression Mm. can be a thing that is long term but knowing how to put like a okay, I've been depressed for a week or I've been in my feelings, whatever word you want to put there, but okay, how to pull yourself out is give and take, give, take, give, mm-hmm. take. So that okay. is the the gist of my rebranding of my fitness business. Is the meal prepping also a part of that as well? Yes, I'll have an option okay. on my website um, where you can, cause some people just need nutrition help. Not everybody needs the mind, body, and soul. Some people just really want to yeah. buy and have their meals already made. So that is going to be an option. So I'll do the same thing. You'll, we'll have a consultation. What are your allergies? Um, what yep. is your goal with your food? Is it for a reason? Or you just really want somebody to cook for you? <laughs> And right. right. And, and for there. those that are watching, cause one mm-hmm. of the, one of the, um, audience, uh well that's that's one of my that's one of my people uh oh, randy hey, y'all. Um, <laughs> he said health and wealth is important and and it, 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 it truly is like if we don't have that health there's no all our goals and dreams go down the hole for those down the dream. right for those that are watching and they don't know mm-hmm. what meal prepping is can you give them mm-hmm. a, an idea of what that is yes so meal prepping and the purpose me- behind this Okay, meal prepping for me, um, I'll start with the purpose. Um, Top purpose is it saves money. And in the Mm -hmm. world and economy we live in today, saving as much as you can um, is key to obviously being able to live a little bit better. And I am a strict person when it comes to my finances. So wherever I can cut down, um, I try to. So I would say Mm -hmm. better management with your finances and then for me, meal prepping is key because it helps what we eat and what we put into our bodies helps with how our brain processes things, the energy that we have throughout the day, our sleep mm-hmm. patterns, and even mm. people don't realize your mood 
plays a big part in what you're consuming and what you're putting into your body. So being able like to, we eat, right? literally, but literally. <laughs> um, so meal prepping just kind of gives you a more structured lifestyle um, and it gives you control, which I'm the type of person that having control over my life, I feel very empowered. Um, that's yeah. why I told you in the beginning when I don't meal prep, I'm like, Ooh, I'm at the, the whim of whatever life is about to give. So whatever energies people are putting in their food, when I have to go eat food out. So meal prepping, you're able to have that control over an aspect of your life where mm -hmm. in other aspects of our life, because life be life ain't you may not have as much control, but with meal prepping, you're able to structure and plan what you're eating, the energy, because you, you're making the food nine times out of 10, or you're going to somebody that you believe has very good energy. So that is there. Um, and for me, it just helps my, my week run smoother because I'm not having to think about, because I typically meal right. prep on a Saturday or a Sunday. Um, I don't like to, to meal prep during the week. Now, if I just have a busy week and I can't, um, I'll still kind of do like a two to three day meal prep versus the whole week, but it just helps my week run smoother. Like once we get done, I'm gonna write out my meal pl plan yeah. and then go to the grocery store and meal prep so that tomorrow I can have a chill day. Then come Monday, I'm running like clockwork. I get up, I work out, go to my first client. Then I work, go to work, clock into work. Then I do business stuff, any emails, videos, content that I need to make. And my day is done. I'm not like, huh, what do I have to make? And then I got to cook it. Then I got to clean it up. I'll go straight to the refrigerator, grab my breakfast Love out, it. eat that, mm -hmm. go. Then pop my lunch in the microwave. Everything is just flowing. So it takes a little bit of stress out of life and life it, because life is already so stressful. So it so. saves time, time, saves money. Money. And saves you from anxiety. Mm-hmm. And then, and it, you know, the, and, and I, it helps with weight management. That's what it yes. sounded like. Yeah. Yes, it, it does. And some fast food. And honestly, it helps with weight management and for people that, for my people that are looking to gain, because I was one of those. So I was meal prepping not to lose weight, but to actually gain weight. Planning mm -hmm. out your meals literally can, um, it adds that the factor right what you're eating because if you're looking to bulk or whatever you just would make more food but versus if you're a person that is trying to gain weight and you don't have any food like that is made for you you're probably mm -hmm. grabbing chips drinking soda pop or grabbing a quick this and a quick that <laughs> but to gain weight you actually need to be eating full meals so a mm -hmm. good six meals for all my people that are out there trying to gain weight a good six solid meals and then for people that are losing weight, then you cut down your meals a little bit and focus on your portion. So it helps for both parties. I don't want people to think like, oh, well, I'm skinny. So or I'm trying to gain weight. So I can't meal prep. No, it helps both ways. Yeah. Girl, you do so much. And um, we're, we're getting ready to wrap up. I just wanted to touch yeah. base again on all the things that you do. So mm -hmm. you are an author of a book. Called I am the Dr. bastard child. child. For, yeah. for just now, um, tapping in. Okay, awesome. And, and it they is can available find the on Amazon, on Amazon okay. or QueenXLiterature.com. Girl, I just saw it on Barnes and Nobles. I don't know if you knew it was on Barnes and Nobles. Shut up. Yes, it's on Barnes and Nobles. You're lying. I am not lying. I'm looking at it right now online. That's so exciting. Okay. Well, let's start that over again. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> Kawhi's book is available on Amazon, uh, on Barnes and Nobles. And what other platforms did you say it was available on? QueenXLiterature.com. And if you guys reach out to me personally on Instagram, um, I will have on-hand copies probably in about a month because um, I sold out. So yeah. that's, a, that's a blessing. Um, and I can always just ship them to you guys. Okay, cool. All right. So we have uh, the book. She also mm -hmm. does holistic health, which is called yes. Fusion Fitness. The Fusion Care on Instagram. I got that all wrong. Repeat that one more time. <laughs> the Fusion Care. 
Fusion Care Wellness. So you could just say that. But if you go to my Instagram, it is in my bio. So you can just click on there and follow okay. me. I am currently hosting a four week challenge. So if you guys are interested, I just really wanted people um because for me my year started in March. So I put together like a little four week um challenge of I have all the details on my page. So if you guys want to join, just go okay. ahead, let me know and tag me daily in your healthy meals. If you're getting active, if you're learning a new Tell topic. Us about the challenge. What is it? What what do we have to do to get to get involved? Any just literally start. Just literally just start um and then just post me. This is more of like an accountability chain. So I just yeah. want people to know like if you are starting this challenge you have me and there are other people that are joining as well. So if you need some motivation, just reach out to somebody, say, Hey, I'm feeling a little, I'm feeling a little lazy today. I need that extra motivation. I'm gonna tell you, get up, get moving. Cause every single day I am getting moving. I have my rest days and I'll say, you know what? You did good for your five days. Okay. Go rest, go eat something good and meet me back on Monday. Mm, okay. So this is a uh, quiet challenge to y'all. So quiet, please um, let people know where they can find you on all your social media platforms. And also too, when we're done recording, I'll mm -hmm. put all those handles inside of uh, our podcast. All my, um, my main social media page is at K's ways main. So that's K A Y S W A Y S underscore main. And you'll find all my other handles literally in my bio to my podcast, which is Fine Talks. Um, and then my wellness business, which is the Fusion Care. Mm -hmm. And yeah, thank you guys for your time. I hope that I was able to inspire you guys to just be like when you think of Kawea and you hear my name, be literally be present, be intentional be successful, be motivated, and most importantly, be you and stay true to yourself. Do not get caught up in impressing anybody, mm. um, feeling like you're in competition with anybody because your story is your story and it is and will motivate whoever it's supposed to. So you don't have to worry about trying right. to reach and be and 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 connect right. with certain people who you're supposed to connect with the universe got that you literally just have to right be. right no and i was just about to ask you if there were some last words that you would leave with the audience <laughs> what would be those things so you're telling us uh to be present with who we are and not yes. um not try to fit into somebody else's thing no if you stay true to yourself you will never ever ever go wrong now don't get me wrong becoming a better person and taking criticism or feedback is always good but staying true to what your core values are you will never go wrong you won't get caught up in the wrong crowd get and not all money is good money either so to my aspiring entrepreneurs not all money is good money i know it looks like a quick fix to get your name out there or be a part of this and then that will help x y and z if it is outside of your core values do mm -hmm. not do it because you will regret right. it so that is for my aspiring entrepreneurs because yeah. yeah i feel like in the beginning when i first started i got caught up in that but then i was able to reel myself back and say if it's not in my lane i don't want to be a part of it and that's so true like association is very important you really got to it know is. um the intentions of some of the people that you're working with and mm -hmm. okay does it line up with your mission then yes. that would be a question for self what for it, sure. what what are, what are my core values what is my mission do i feel peaceful in taking on this new contract or this connection mm -hmm. and if it mm -hmm. doesn't uh, that would highly likely be a sign for you to walk away yes. but oh you said that you also have resources for the people on your page um, for the foster care system. Is that something that you... No, I was saying that's probably something that I should add because okay. I do partner with a foster care um, nonprofit organization. They're called mm -hmm. WASMO, but um, I need to... It? I'll send that to you so okay. I don't butcher it. But I, and if you guys have resources for me in order to do more work and provide more resources, because that is what I want to do with my wellness friend, I am open to that. And that will help me get to that next level because that is something that really defines me. So 
anybody mm. out there that wants to be a good mentor, as far as getting that done, I am open um, to the mentorship. <laughs> ah, okay. Are you open to take a question or two? Uh, if, if yes, somebody... I am. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, we are wrapping up, ladies and gentlemen. If you have a question, please put it in the chat so that way I can ask our special guest here. And uh, after you do that, I guess we'll we'll wrap up this session. But thank okay. you. Okay. And so I'm much. so proud of you. Keep it going. Five episodes okay. in. Let's go. Thank you. Thank you, Hanif uh, Jordan. She's in the comments. Um, mm -hmm. She is uh, also an author and a podcaster. Yay. I think, you know, yeah, y'all may need to connect because her story yes. is also too about resilience and uh, God. Her, is I that think who you emailed me about? Um, no, no, no. That's, um, that is Professor Zahalia Anderson. And if you guys can, um, anybody wanting to get interviewed, literally just email or DM um, my podcast page, which is Fine Talks, which that's in my bio as well, so that I have your Instagram ha handle mm -hmm. and my team can reach out to you because I do have a team that takes care of booking and stuff. So I don't want to miss anybody. And I'm literally always, I appreciate when people reach out to me and say, hey, I want to get on your show and talk. Mm -hmm. Like, I love that. So Girl, if you guys stories. are interested, just please just DM me so that we can get you set up for an interview. I am currently in season two, so I'm super excited. We're dropping, I'm dropping um, your episode this Saturday, so on the 16th. So you guys be on the lookout for that. It was a tearjerker. I, oh I, I cried watching you what? cry. I was oh like, oh God. yeah, this, that was a perfect way to end season one. I, and it was so hard for us to get that interview. So I'm like, I'm glad that we pushed that through. <laughs> I'm glad that we pushed through because everything turned out perfect. And I was like, oh, that's God. about to be a smooth transition into my season two. So that was chef's kiss. When I watched it, when I watched my episodes back before I aired them, and I'm like, yeah, that was a good. I know it's gonna be a good episode. <laughs> and that was a very good. Oprah, I hope okay. somebody, anybody that know Oprah, y'all tell her I want to meet her. Cause that was a, that was an on Oprah's couch episode for sure. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> oh goodness. Well, thank you so much for having me on your show and um, no I'll connect problem. with you. I'll connect you with Tanif. Um, I think okay. Tanif is also, hers is called couch therapy. Um, Ooh, so, I need oh, a girl. couch therapy session. Girl. <laughs> Tanif was all up in the business and she's also a, an intuitive. Ooh, Ooh girl. That's deep. That's oh yeah, deep. oh yeah, oh def definitely. But nobody, nobody asks any questions. So okay, once cool. again, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for and having me, girl. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you, you too. And don't work too hard. Do not work too hard. Take one What's day that? off at least. One day. <laughs> we'll go have a mimosa, some pancakes, something. <laughs> Take one day off, if anything. But thank you, yeah, thank yeah. you, thank you, thank you. And Thank you. please send me um, the recording as well so that I can post okay. it. All right. All right. Sounds good. Bye. Have a great rest of the day. Okay. Bye. Bye.